and welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm Teresa Elling and we are going to tackle the food storage drawers in our kitchens today. Food storage containers are one of the worst things to keep organized in the kitchen. They're enough to make you pull your hair out and go crazy. But that is why organizing them um, one to two times a year can help bring your sanity back. This is what my two main drawers look like when I pulled them out and they have just been a jumbled mess. Now, I've been a professional organizer for well over 15 years. I help people all the time with this. I know all the rules about Tupperware and Rubbermaid containers, but the thing is the daily maintenance, that is what is tricky. And if you don't maintain it consistently, you end up with this mess where you just have to go through everything. And just like socks in the dryer, you will lose containers, you will lose lids. I don't know how it happens, but it happens to everyone. So I've taken everything out and put it here on my island. I'm going to start sorting, but there are few things that you need to do before you start. First off, check the refrigerator. Have you got any containers in there? I actually only had one mason jar with pickled onion in it, and that was it. Then check your kitchen sink. And when I looked in there, I only had one dirty container waiting to be washed. I gave that a quick wash and brought it over here. The third place to look is your dishwasher, if you have one. Fortunately, my dishes were clean, so I just pulled out a lot of the glassware and glass containers that were in my dishwasher. The reason it's important to do that is you want all of your storage containers out. You want to know what you're working with before you start. So the main thing I'm going to do right now is put like things together. I'm going to match lids and containers. And if I have any halves that are missing, then I will donate those pieces. about these I have these all sitting in my pantry I just thought of one other container um, that I missed in the refrigerator because it was in the drawer and this is a glass container with a plastic lid and we have marked it onion with permanent marker uh, because as you know, plastic will take on the smell and taste, especially of onion. And so this is the lid we just always use for onion. I keep any chopped onion or half an onion in here. And then um, we occasionally get it all rinsed out and get you know fresh onion in, but we're reusing the same lid every time. Sometimes these containers aren't really labeled as to their size, which can be tricky. And sometimes I do freezer meals and a lot of times it will say use a 32 ounce container or a 64 ounce container to store in the freezer. And I might not know what size that is. So for example, uh, these containers right here on the bottom do say that they are 14 cups. So I did the math and that is 112 ounces and I just wrote that on the bottom in permanent marker. So I know how much these will hold. If you're not sure, you can always measure with water. So I'm curious about this container right here. I actually have three of these and I use them all the time. If I wanna use them for freezer cooking, I need to know how much will fit in here, which it's more than I thought because I've already filled this. This is two quarts or eight cups already. Um, let me put this aside so I can water my plants with it later. Okay, so there's the eight cups already, and there's still more to go. So this was eight plus another four. So that holds 12 cups, um, which is actually pretty impressive. But I would not have known that before, so now I will mark it on the bottom. I just want to remind you that you can do this as a one hour organizing project. 
Just pick a drawer or two, empty it completely, wipe it out, sort, declutter, put back in whatever fits in your space and what you use and what you love. You also can do an entire kitchen clean out. Now, for example, when I did my pantry, I did that all at once. And it's a little more intensive, but it's really rewarding to get it all done. But sometimes you just don't have the time to do that. So if you don't have that opportunity in your kitchen, just do one drawer at a time. Now, once in a while, when you start working on one drawer, there has to be a little bit of give and take with the rest of your kitchen. For example, I use mason jars a lot for storage, and we also use them for drinking. So I'm going to have to kind of see what I have as far as drinking glasses, where I keep these, and so in addition to my Tupperware drawers, I'm probably gonna to have to move over to my glassware as well. Now this is everything that has a lid. <laughs> and this stuff over here is all stuff that doesn't have a match or it's something that I don't use, but it's mainly things that didn't have a lid. I'm actually pretty shocked at how many things I did not have a lid for and therefore are really um, unusable unless you're gonna use saran wrap or some other kind of cover. And I'm really trying to get away from using plastic wrap, so I love the stuff that has lids. You wanna make sure that you completely wipe out your drawers and if you have any kind of a drawer slip inside, you wanna pull that out too, wipe out all the crumbs, spray it, clean it. Now here's the most important thing about storing food storage containers. The ultimate way to store is to have everything matched with this lid. That is absolutely the easiest way. It's the easiest way to quickly grab something and it's the easiest way to put it back. Whenever you have things nesting, you have a little more work to finagle stuff, get it back where it needs to be. Sometimes when we're in a hurry, we just don't wanna go through the re-nesting process. So we open a drawer, we look at it and go, ah, uh, and we just throw it in. And that's how our drawers end up getting messy. So if there is any way that you can actually keep your lids with your containers, that is what I suggest. Now, obviously, if you are extremely limited on space, you're going to have to take advantage of nesting containers, and that is really space saving. But remember, either way you choose, you still don't want to have too much. You don't want to have more than what you use regularly. At this point, I have two drawers that are containers with boundaries. I can't overflow those, so everything needs to fit. So I'm going to make sure to take the things I love and use the most and start filling the drawers, and then whatever doesn't fit is going to need to go. I finished filling my drawers and we're going to go over really quick um, my reasoning behind getting rid of some of these things. I am trying to go mainly towards glass and that's why I'm a little sad I don't have lids for these things, but they're going to be donated and as well as some random lids, some plastic lids that I don't have bottoms to. These uh, were part of a thrift haul. I just think these bowls are beautiful and it's a set of six. But honestly, I don't need that many, and I only have five lids. So this allows me to keep my four favorites with four lids, and I can donate these two. And then these little containers, I just had too many. I don't use them anymore for the purpose, which was a portion control system, and it's really great for that. But at this point, I'm only gonna keep a few little ones for salad dressings and sauces for lunches and the rest are going to be donated. Same with random plastic that I'm just getting rid of. I'm doing as much glass as possible. I do have a few plastic things, especially in my really large containers. 
Um, this, the lid has never fit right, ever, and it's always bothered me, and so now it's time for it to go. This is just a regular to-go container, which I do save these if I wanna send leftovers to someone, but my um, shelf that holds these kind of containers is full. So that means capacity's full and I don't have room for anything else. So this can be donated or recycled. Let's take a look at these drawers. In the top one, I have got um, some smaller containers that I use. I have this set for food prep and some small square containers. These are ones that we use all the time. And then this set here is really great because it does nest and I love it because whatever container it is, uh, the color, so the red on the back means it gets a red lid. It's really easy to find the corresponding lid. I love this set. This is one of the exceptions I've made to nesting these all inside because I'm going to commit to making the effort to putting them back nested in their proper order. So as long as I do that, then this system is going to work. I also am keeping my reusable plastic containers. These can be reused many, many times instead of Ziploc baggies. And also my beeswax wraps. And these are great if you've never used them before. I'll give you an example. They just seal right over the top. You can kind of warm them a little bit if it's cold weather. It warms up the wax a bit. You can literally just kind of press it on to seal and it can uh, make things airtight and it's completely natural and reusable. Going down to the next drawer, I have more glass containers. These are kind of medium sized and I am keeping the lid with each container. That's really going to help me keep this in order the main thing you need to remember is do not put a container away that is moist, that has any moisture in it, that's wet at all, and completely seal a lid on it. You can put it away if the lid's ajar, and in the summer, definitely not a problem. In the winter, make sure it's dry before you put it away. That's the only thing you have to watch out for. But I think that keeping the lids with these containers is really going to help me keep these drawers neat. Now, I also have two drawers back here that I had emptied out from an earlier kitchen redo, and I wanted to move some of my larger Tupperware over to here. And that's what I've done. These are my really big containers, ones that I would use for a potluck or for a really large container of soup, for example, that I wanna freeze or keep in the fridge. But this is stuff that I don't use as often anymore now that we are empty nesters. But whenever we do have a large family um, gathering, these are gonna come in really handy. But that's why they're in their own spot, each one with its lid. And that caused me to clean out this drawer. I wasn't intending on doing that, but we needed to get my glasses and my canning jars in order. And so sometimes it just forces your hand a little bit with organizing. Uh, I decided to keep most of my jars up here. I have my half gallon and my quart and my pint. And these are the ones I use the most often. We do use these for drinking glasses, but we also use the pint and a half. And so again, these are all wide mouth, which is really great. And I can keep them on either shelf and they'll be just fine. And then in this drawer, I've got some of these smaller containers. This is uh, the short little squatty one here, but it is a wide mouth. And then the few narrow mouth that I have are these tiny little um, half pint. And these make great drinking glasses as well. They're great for leftovers, for making a quick sauce or dressing. And my favorite lids are these plastic ones. Now I realize you have to use the metal lid and ring for canning, but if you're not canning, these are the best lids. And they are not only pretty to look at, and easy to put on, normally easy to put on. You can also write on the lid with a dry erase marker, and I love that feature. And then what I use, you can't get white ones in regular mouth, but I get the leak-proof gray, just to keep a color difference so they're easy to grab, and I don't get them mixed up wondering 
which size of a white lid I need. I have my gray and I have my white. Now the other thing I did in here, before I had the canning lids over there, but all my jars are here. So that doesn't make sense. As far as saving steps and being motion minded, you want things where you use them. So because my jars are here, I moved my lids here. The other thing is we have this awesome popcorn popper that some great friends of ours gave us. And it, um, it's the best popcorn popper I've ever had. It is called, I need to, I should probably link it below for you, the Salbri. And it is a microwave system. You just put the popcorn in the bottom. It takes no oil. And I would say 90% of the time we have perfect popcorn without even one kernel unpopped. Amazing. And then you can use um, salt, garlic, nutritional yeast, whatever kind of toppings you want. Of course, you could use butter, but we're trying to cut that out. And so if my popcorn popper is here, where should my popcorn be? So I've decided to move it over here. I poured it out of this jar and I'll now have this for a separate grain back in my pantry. But I went ahead and put the popcorn right here in the drawer. So again, easy access, putting the items near where you use them. The other thing is my protein powder because I always make my smoothies in my blend tech, which is right here. So walking over to the pantry to get something, it's fine if it's something you don't use very often, but if you make smoothies three, four, five, six times a week, have the protein powder handy right where you use it. Let's take one more look at the before picture. These were the Tupperware drawers before, and this is what they look like after. I definitely think this is an improvement. This took me less than an hour, so go for it. Pick a drawer or two in your kitchen. Also, I will link below the kitchen drawer organizer uh, video that I did when I did my utensil drawers. And I went through four drawers and did an hour organizing project there. And that's a great one. Um, if you're looking for areas in your kitchen that you can do a really quick one hour challenge. Thank you so much for joining me on The Peaceful Home. Have a great day.